Are you serious? Are you serious, Mohammed? Mercy. His constitutional amendment, his constitution, new drafted constitution, has passed by a decisive manner of 64%. Cairo, Egypt reporting the Islamic-backed Egyptian constitution won approval in a referendum as the rival camp said on Sunday after a vote the opposition said would sow deep, deep, deep social divisions in the Arab world's most populous nation. The Islamic Muslim Brotherhood, which propelled President Mohammed Mursi to power in a June election said the unofficial tally is showing 64% of the voters have backed the charter after two rounds of voting that ended with a final ballot on Saturday. So, on this December 23rd, 2012, Mohammed Mursi, you might as well say, is the 12th Pharaoh of Egypt. Firing the Parliament, firing the Supreme Court, eliminating 70 top generals, replacing them with Muslim Brotherhood, getting rid of the top 10 governors in the country, replacing them with Muslim Brotherhood. And now the nation with a vote of 64% support this new constitution, which gives Mohammed Mercy ultimate and absolute power to rule Egypt with the rod of iron, to rule Egypt with Sharia law, to become the fierce king, the cruel lord of Egypt. Now, the Bible said this day would come, but you got to roll back the millenniums of time, over 3,000 years, to find the ancient prophet Isaiah, and let's go there now to the 19th chapter of the book of Isaiah. The Bible said the burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. Well, we know during the Arab Spring and the uprising of Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, Yemen, and now Syria, that each one of the leaders, Ben Ali, Jose Mubarak, Muammar Gaddafi, Ali Alabala Saleh were all predicted and prophesied they would be toppled by the regime, by, by the uh, uprisings, and they were all prophesied to fall by President Barack Obama, who supports the rise of the Muslim Brotherhood, who on Independence Day, his first Independence Day as President of the United States, he was not in Washington, D.C., watching fireworks over the Washington Mall. He was not in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, ringing the Liberty Bell. No, he was in Cairo, Egypt, on the beginning of his American Apology Tour, lifting the spirits of the Muslim people, starting what I call a Muslim Revival speech in Cairo, which wound up exciting and liberating and causing what seems to be the Arab Spring. Well, when it came to Egypt, the idols were moved at the presence of God as the people went into King Tut's museum and stole eight of his idol gods. Five of them were recovered within a week and returned, but three of those idol gods have never been recovered. Hang on to that thought. Because in Isaiah 19, verse 2, the Bible said, And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight everyone against his brother. We saw that. Everyone against his neighbor. We saw that. Every, city against city. We've witnessed that. And kingdom against kingdom. That is quite evident. First of all, the Muslim Brotherhood rose up against Christians in outlying areas of different cities burning their churches, burning their homes, and crucifying Christians in the trees in front of Mohammed Mercy's presidential palace. Also, the spirit of darkness has risen in the land as secular Egyptians, humanistic uh, Egyptians, have also lost their life if protesting against this new fierce king, cruel lord, Mohammed Mercy. 
Verse 3, the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof. Now, after Jose Mubarak fell, there was a five-man general council that ruled Egypt for 18 months. I kept telling you and prophesying to you that this council will be destroyed as a new leader emerges. And it wasn't long. Six days after Mohammed Mercy took power in Egypt after the election in June, he fired the council, the governing council. And I will destroy the council thereof. And they that seek the idols, remember those three idols missing? And they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers, that's one, and to them with familiar spirits, that's two, and to the wizards, that's three. The three idol gods still not recovered from King Tut's museum are the, the gods that the Egyptian people are seeking during this very difficult transitional time in what's known as the Arab Spring, but I call the dark winter the rise of the Muslim Brotherhood. And verse five and verse four, the Egyptians will I give over to the hand of a cruel Lord, a fierce king, and he shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. Who is that fierce king? Who is that cruel Lord? Mohammed Mercy. Now, it's reported that he has a brain tumor. But there are other reports saying that he doesn't. Now, I did a video Friday saying, is this the deadly head wound? I should have clarified myself better, so I will now. I'm not saying that Muhammad Mercy is the Antichrist in the final days. No. But he could, and he is, the fierce king, the cruel lord, that will rule Egypt and will try to build a coalition among Arabic nations in the Middle East over the next period of time. And he has already declared a Jerusalem, a jihad upon Jerusalem. He has already the chants of thousands of Egyptians. Now, they've already chanted, millions of martyrs will march in Jerusalem. Millions of martyrs will march in Jerusalem. He's already allowed Iranian warships and Chinese warships to come through the Suez Canal and set in the Mediterranean waters off the coast of Israel. He's already put 175 Abram tanks in the Sinai Peninsula staring at Israel. He's already said he wants to rewrite the peace agreement that stood for 32 years that was brokered uh, by Jimmy Carter and Menachem Begin and Anwar Sadat. He's already said that he wants to build a coalition, a United States of Arabs. Folks, Make no mistake, Mohammed Mercy will play a key, key role in the end times. That's why in my new book, Mark of the Beast, R-F-I-D, Mark of the Beast, R-F-I-D, that is why the Holy Spirit, right there, the Lord told me to put him on the cover of this book, and I put him there, I wrote him into the story, and put him on the, 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 out, uh, the back cover of the book, when there was still an election to be held, when there were still 13 candidates, as the Holy Spirit told me, he would win this election and that he is the fierce king. He is the cruel Lord. No, he's not the final Antichrist in the last day that will walk into the temple of God and, and stand before the people of God and declare he's God. No. But he is, he does have an Antichrist spirit. He is anti Christian, believe me. And he doesn't care. To, to see them beheaded and show those videos on state-run television Egypt. He's already done that. He did not say a word when Christians were crucified in the front lawn of his palace as he looked out the window. Now this guy, and why did President Obama use him to broker the ceasefire with Israel and the Palestinians? Make no mistake, this guy's for Sharia law, and he will... F and now the opposition that are upset about this constitution that passed... If they don't get in line soon, he will hammer them down. He has the backing of President Barack Obama. Folks, get right with God. Now, the, the false prophet will come out of uh, radical Islam, and the Antichrist will be a political leader. But be careful about Muhammad Mercy. He plays a key role. Give your life to Jesus Christ. We're running out of time. You need to be saved. 
Jesus Christ can